Hey everybody, Eurus McSparks with you, and today I'd like to talk about Roblox's custom particle system. Particles are a really big deal in games, you see them in almost every game you play, and they're a rendering technique to create really interesting fluid effects. So quite often you'll see like smoke or magic spells, like the wash from a big spaceship engine, quite often these are going to use particles. Because in a system, say like Roblox, it can be very difficult to create these organic effects just from say parts or even surface GUIs. Usually you need a lot of small textures that are overlaid or blended together to make the effect that you want. Now Roblox already has some particle systems in place. So the classic smoke, fire, and sparkles, even force fields and explosions. These all use particles to create those cool effects that we love so much. But we didn't want to limit you to just those. We want to open the gates to the types of particles that you can create. And so let's look at how you can use custom particles in your game. So I have Studio open here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a part. Here in my workspace, I'm going to right click on the part. Then I'm going to insert a particle emitter. And boom, already we got some particles going on. And there are basic star texture, as you can see. This is what we provide by default, but you can change it to any texture you like. And just want to note a couple things about this part. The particles are going to be emitted all throughout the part that you put parented into. So if we make the part really big, notice how the particles will erupt from every part of the part. And we make it really small, makes a nice narrow stream. And one more thing to note about the part is that the particles always come out of the top. They're always going up relative to the part. So if we tilt the part, they're still going to come out of the part, uh, pardon me, out of the top, no matter which way we rotate this. So that's important to keep in mind when you're making your particle system. So let's look at how we can customize this. If we click on the particle emitter itself, you notice we've got a whole bunch of properties we can play around with. And I want to highlight just a couple of the really important ones. The big one that I think that most of you are going to enjoy is the texture property. This is what lets you change the sprite that's used in the particle system. Now, I have my game published as a game. And so in my game explorer, I have a couple images that I've uploaded that I'm going to play around with. So if I click on my textures, click on smoke. And this is just a soft little smoke cloud that has transparent edges. All right, you can kind of get a cool smoke feel. But keep in mind, you're not limited to just things like this. You can go all out. You can use any kind of texture you want. Say we want a big field of Roblo Roblox logos going up. Oh, yeah, I like this. This is super cool. You can use any kind of image you want, and you can upload the th them through the Game Explorer or through the website like you would upload like a decal for decals, textures, or image labels. Any kind of image you like. Quite often, though, I recommend making sure that the edges of your particle texture are transparent so that they mesh together nicely. You don't want to see a whole bunch of boxes floating up. I'll undo a bit, go back to my stars. Let's look at a couple other ways we can mess around with these particles. So down here at the bottom, we have a lot of, a lot of ways on how the particles are emitted from the part. And for most of these, there's a little bit of randomness to it. So let's take a look at lifetime. This basically means how long the particles are going to last. Notice here we have a minimum and maximum. Minimum is 5 seconds, maximum is 10. If I change this to, let's say, like 1 second, just in general, they're not going to last very long. They just blot out almost as soon as they're made. Basically, you can change these to pretty much anything you want. There are caps. The cap for a lifetime is 20 seconds. The wiki goes over all the limits of each one of these properties in case you're wondering how you have to create your system. You can get a lot of variety with that way. You also change how many particles come out. So you go up to like 50, maybe even 500. Why not? A whole bunch of particles come out. Oh yeah, that's cool. You can even change the speed at which they come out. We don't like them coming out straight up. What we can do is we can add in a little bit of spread, so 30 degrees means that they can fire off up to 30 degrees away from this top center line. You can all go up to 90. I want to go out. Or, if you're like me, you like cool explosions, you can even set this all the way up to 180. 
get a really cool explosion effect. Particles going every which way. Just going to undo that a bit. Oh man, there's a lot of particles. Oh, this is cool. There we go. So what are some other cool things we can do with these? Well, we can change the color. Right now, these are just blank white stars. Not that exciting. But we can set a start and an end color. So let's say I want them to start off as kind of a steep red. It may end up being a green. You'll see. The particles start off red. And I change to green. You can change these to any colors you like. And even if you're using a color texture, like say that Roblox logo from earlier, you'll still tint it to the color that you set. Now another really cool thing that is very new to Studio is we added a spline editor. So notice how the size of these particles starts off and it's constant throughout. That's because we just hard coded the size to one. I'm going to reduce the rate so we can see this a little bit easier than just the five particles. What we can do with the size is we can click on this button over to the right of the size and get this new window. And this lets us set a start and an end. So you can see we start off with big particles. It goes down to smaller ones. But we can add as many points as we want in between. So they can get big, they can get small, they can get big again. Notice how they'll change size as they go through their lifetime. What's further cooler about the spline editor, I'll remove a couple of these points, so you can also add some randomness in here. So let's say we want our, our stars to be relatively big when they start off. Well, I can just drag this envelope, and now the size is going to be picked anywhere inside this red zone. So sometimes it'll be a little bit bigger than the default size, sometimes it'll be a little bit smaller. If we zoom in, we can even see like, there's a little small one, there's a big one. And you can do this around any point you want inside your editor. And so you can get a lot of cool random variety. And that's really important when you have a natural effect, again, like say like a smoke. You don't want everything to be a static size that draws people out of the experience. You want it to feel more fluid than that. You can also use the spine editor on transparency, which I think is super helpful. So often when these just wink out of existence, that's not very exciting. So it's often nice to just have them fade out. You know, with the spline editor. You can also add envelopes too if you want a little bit of variety there. And there's just a couple more things I like to highlight before I let you go. One thing, light emission is really cool. What this does is it adds an additive property to the light, to the textures. So when they overlap, they actually become a brighter color because the numbers are adding together. I set this all the way to one, get a really cool glow effect, which is really neat. And lastly, the thing I like the most, oop, let me tilt this around a little bit. So I tilt this again, making particles come out. I'm going to set an acceleration to these parts. Oop. Set an acceleration to these particles. So that they get affected by, so it looks like they're affected by gravity. If we had them come out a little bit faster. Oh, maybe that's too fast. There we go, right in the middle. They fall down to, to the negative acceleration. So I hope you can see from this brief overview that there's a lot you can do with our particle system. Now, there's a lot more to it, and this is fully documented on the wiki if you have any questions about any of these properties. Because we really, again, we want to make sure that we open up the system for you so you can have all kinds of creative experiences in your games. But for now, this has been Eurismic Sparks. I can't wait to see what you make with particles. Thanks for watching.